Alrighty guys, uh, objective 112, we will be finding the greatest common factor using prime factorization. So I want to be very clear, we are using prime factorization, but in no way are we just trying to find prime factors or anything of that sort. We're just using this method to find the greatest common factor, okay? So we have the steps listed here. I'm gonna guide you through the steps through an example. So I'm sorry, so you actually lift it up just a little bit. The first step says prime factorize each number. Again, we're just using this method. So for 12, we are going to break it down into primes. Again, you can choose any number you'd like or any factors you'd like. I'm going to choose 6 and 2. I notice that 2 is prime, so I'm going to go ahead and circle it. I'm going to continue breaking down 6 because it's still composite. Here, we can do 3 times 2. And now I have 2 and 3, which are both prime, so I'm going to go ahead and circle. I'm going to do the same for 20. I'm going to choose 4 and 5. 5 is prime, so I circle it. And I'm going to continue breaking down 4 until I have a list of all prime factors. I'm going to listen out from least to greatest. So I have 2, and I'm going to cross off as we go, times 2, times 3. And for 20, I have 2, times 2, times 5. So we have taken care of step 1. Oh, I'm sorry, and step 2. Now we are going to circle the shared prime factors. Notice I'm not going to list them twice. So here I see a 2. Here I also see a 2. So I'm going to simply pull out a 2, indicating that they both have a 2 and they share. They have another 2 that they share. So I'm going to go ahead and circle that. And I'm going to pull that out. Notice I'm putting multiplication here. I'm going to scan both of my lists and think, do I have any other shared factors? I don't. So these are the only two factors that they share. When I multiply them, I will get a product of four, and this will be my GCF. Just so we're double checking, like we're not confusing prime factorization with, with just finding all the factors, I'm going to go ahead and list out all of the factors of 12 and 20 and see if the greatest common factor is actually 4. So go ahead and list all the factors of 12 and 20. We'll have 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. For 20, we're going to have 1 times 20, 2 times 10, and 4 times 5. And now I'm looking for the greatest. So even though they both have one, it's not the largest. So let's start off at the larger end of the list. 12 is here, but there is no 12 factor here. We have 20 here, but we don't have a 20 there. We're looking for the greatest common or share. We have six here, but we don't have six here. We have 10 here, we don't have 10 here. Five here, we don't have five here. And now I see that we have four. We have two, and we have one, and the greatest of those will be four. Now, which one is more time consuming? Hopefully you're thinking this is a little bit more time consuming. Because once you get into prime factorization, it actually doesn't take very long at all. And if we were working with larger numbers, for example, 280 and 925, You'll notice it's much quicker using prime factorization than listing out all of the factors of these two larger numbers. Uh, notice I put all of my work on the side here just because my board space is limited, but I've actually provided spaces for uh, steps three and four on your notes sheet. So you can go ahead and organize your notes uh, better than I have them up here. We're gonna go ahead to the next page and do our second example. So I really like comparing this method to prime factorization because it reinforces that 
we are not crime factors and justifying crime factors. We are looking for a greatest common factor, whether it's crime or not, it doesn't matter, we're just looking for the largest one. So really quickly, let's go ahead and list out all of the factors of four and 24. Here, we're gonna have one, two, and four. I don't need to list out two twice. We're gonna have one times 24, two times 12, three times eight, four times six. So looking at our list, we should see that the greatest common factor is going to be four because it is the largest factor that they both have. But a quicker route is through prime factorization. So step one is to actually prime factorize both. Here we're gonna have six and four. Again, you can choose any two factors that you, you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and list them out as a product. So I have two times two times two times three here. I'm gonna do a quick check, make sure I get back to 24. So two times two is four, times two is eight, eight times three is 24. So I have all of my prime factors here. And here I have two times two. I'm gonna go ahead and list all of the shared prime factors. So we have two here and a two here. So I'm gonna pull out the two just one time. I have another two that they both share. So I'm gonna go ahead and again, pull that out just one time. They have no more prime factors that they share. So I'm gonna end step three. When we find the product of them or we multiply them, two times two, we get our GCF, that is four. On your own, I want you to be shown every single step for practice three and four before you come to class. I'm going to walk you through practice five this is the work that you should be showing. If we don't see this, you are not spending a good amount of time on your homework. So reading together, I want to start off with the C of cuss, meaning circling what the question is actually asking. And what the question is asking is, what is the value of two times y plus two? Well, in order to answer this, we know that we need to go back in and figure out what in the world is y. So looking here, exactly what we thought. The question being asked, you know what y is here. It says y is the greatest common factor of these three numbers. So y is the GCF of these three numbers. I also want to uh, point out, we might see GCF or GCD as a divisor, so keep that in mind. We can go ahead and prime factorize. So I want you to do the prime factorization of these three on your own and then hit play when you're done. So, and then should I show, um, like how they should work backwards? When you work backwards? Like, if they have answer choices, like they can just work backwards and be like, 48 divided by 14, you know what I mean? What's the difference to y plus two? very similar to mine. Notice that I'm not skipping any steps and neither should you. Uh, next, we're going to look at which 
uh, prime factors they share. So I notice they all share a two, so I'm going to pull that out. They share another two here, so I'm going to pull that out times two. Um, this one only has a five, and there are no shared fives in the other two numbers. So we are actually done. So our GCF is going to be four. Notice how I'm not going to select my answer choice B for four, because it never asked us for what is the greatest common factor. It said, what is two times the greatest common factor plus two? So we're going to go ahead and substitute that back into our problem. Two times, when we're substituting, we use parentheses. Four plus two. That will give us eight plus two. So 10 would be our final answer, which is letter choice A. Again, this is the work that you're showing. Anything less than this will be considered a LaSalle, and you're not getting the practice that you should be with these awesome practice problems. All right, this is the last practice problem we're going to go through with you guys in this objective. Um, you should be all the way done through problem 15. We'll tell you right now, this is one of the tougher objectives for all of unit two, and it's a lot, it's a big one. Um, really hope you didn't wait till late night to do this because you really need to grapple with these problems. For practice three, um, probably we'll read the whole question. The very first thing I'm going to do is write my, my class acronym off to the side. Because the very first thing, I don't even care about all the information, I want to go straight to the question. The question is asking, you know, she wants each container to have the greatest number of cookies possible. How many plastic containers does she need? So already I can go back to the scenario and figure out, okay, what is that talking about? I'm going to underline the information that helps me figure out you know, how many plastic containers does QR need. So it's saying QR baked 35 oatmeal cookies and 56 chocolate chip cookies to package in plastic containers for her friends at school. She wants to divide the cookies up into identical containers so that each container has the same number of each kind of cookie. So think about the scenario. You want to bring and, and treat your friends, but ideally you want to give each friend the same amount of each cookie. So they go through, like, I need to know how many cookies of each kind that she needs. You know, it's really important that she wants to divide the cookies into identical containers. So that each container gets the same number of each kind of cookie. Okay? We're first going to pay attention to the language. We have these big quantities of cookies, and we want to divide them into even groups. That's a really big key point that this might be a problem we can use our GCF skills to solve. We have these large numbers, and we want to break them down and say even groups or even quantities. We're going from big to large. That's a sign that we can use greatest common factor. We can find where these values overlap and the biggest number of groups we can make. That's a skill that we've been working on in this objective. So the first thing I'm going to do is, well, I'm going to see what is the greatest common factor between those values. I'm going to use that same uh, prime factorization skill that we've been working on. Like 35. This is really nice. Both of these are prime, so I'm done. Those are the prime numbers. Now I have 56. I personally like going by twos, and the cam makes it easier for me. I'm going to list them out over here. So the prime factorization of 35 is 5 times 7. And then 56 is 2 times 2 times 2 and then times 7. So again, to find the greatest common factor, I need to see which prime factors overlap. Which one's going to overlap? Well, I don't see any 5s here, so I can't really use that. I don't see any 2s up here, so the only common prime factor that had a 7. So I'm going to pull that out and then GCF the 7. Notice that if they didn't have any common prime factors, it just means that their GCF is 1. That's the biggest value they have in common. Okay? So their GCF is 7. Now I'd love that, like, yeah, I answered the question, you did. Same. She wants to know uh, each container, like, how many containers does she need? So if the GCF is 7, it means that the biggest groups I can make from these two are, are 7. So that does help me answer the question, but it's not complete. She's going to need seven plastic containers. But we want you to think a little more logically. Okay? She's going to have seven containers. Okay. 
But really, uh, the more important question is how many cookies are going to go into each container? This is a real problem. This is a real life situation. You can answer this in a more real life fashion. If you're like, yes, you need seven containers, it's like, that's true, but there's more to it. You should ask yourself, okay, how many cookies will actually go into each of these containers to make sure I can check and see do they all have the same number? So if you're going to have seven containers, ask yourself how many oat milk cookies will go in this, will go in just one container. You can find that out by just doing 35 divided by 7. And so it's saying that each container is going to have five oat milk cookies. And then take 56 divided by 7, you get 8. So each container is going to have five oat milk cookies and eight chocolate chip cookies. And you can check that. So if she has to use seven containers, and I multiply them back to get back to the original quantities. So a full complete answer to this would sound like a QR needs seven containers, and in each container you would have five oatmeal cookies and eight chocolate chip cookies. That fully answers the question, and that actually tells her like how many of each kind she had to put in each container so that she's a good friend. Because how rude would it be if like one friend got more than another? That's not okay. Good. Now, the rest of these problems are really difficult, um, especially on the next page when you get into some ACT type questions. Again, any multiple choice, you have to have all of your work shown. If you just circle that to the saddle, like we have no idea of knowing, did you really put the time in? So make sure you really dig into these. Um, we'll see you tomorrow to talk about um, everything we've gone over in this objective. Have a great rest of your night.